Google really messed up. It's official. I'm deleting Google Chrome, and I can promise you the title of this video is not clickbait. After using Chrome for years, I'm finally deleting it for good. So why am I deleting it? In January 2023, Google is making a change that is going to cripple ad blockers. I'm a firm believer that ad blockers greatly enhance the viewing experience, and I'm not willing to put up with this change. In prior recent comparisons, I've looked at Safari and Opera, but I've never been able to fully switch away from Chrome. I did use Opera for a while, but I ended up switching back to Chrome due to the constant bugs, glitches, and concerns over data privacy due to the company who owns Opera. So back to Chrome it was, but this time I'm officially deleting Chrome for good. This all started when Google announced a change to the Manifest Extension platform. This is the platform that developers use to make Chrome extensions. The rollout of the new Manifest V3 will begin in January 2023, and the old Manifest V2 will be fully phased out by June. So this means that June is effectively when ad blockers are going to be crippled. I've had a desire to get away from Google Chrome for a long time because, well, Google is a data company. They already have enough of my personal information through Gmail, Google Maps, Google Search, YouTube, all the Google products, and Google Chrome is just another way of collecting user data. But the Manifest V3 rollout is the straw that broke the camel's back. I finally have enough reason to delete Google Chrome for good, and I'm starting my journey by checking out Brave. As soon as I downloaded Brave, I felt strangely right at home. I had this weird deja vu feeling. Did I even switch browsers? In reality, I did have to disable some settings like the Brave Wallet and Brave Rewards, but once I configured a few things, I felt right at home. I think that's partly by design and partly because Brave is using Chromium, but more on that later. One annoyance I faced with Brave was the syncing feature. I set up Brave on my laptop and wanted to sync everything to my desktop, and boy, was that a pain. I had a lot of trouble getting the feature to work, so I had to keep enabling sync and disabling sync because it kept getting stuck, but I do hope they can improve the sync feature in the future. One of the most important things I look for in a browser is whether or not it supports Chrome extensions. I use extensions like 1Password, Rakuten, Honey, vidIQ, and TubeBuddy, some of which are only available on Google Chrome. But there is a slight loophole to that statement. Browsers that are built on Chromium can run Chrome extensions, and that's why Brave is actually able to run all of my Chrome extensions perfectly. So Brave feels a lot like Chrome. Brave runs my Chrome extensions, and it even has advanced features like profiles. This is a powerful feature of Google Chrome that not many other Chromium browsers support. Opera doesn't have profiles, but Brave does, and it's another reason I felt right at home with Brave. At this point, you might be thinking, well, if Brave feels so similar to Chrome, why make the switch? And what about Manifest V3? If Brave runs Chrome extensions, then wouldn't ad blockers also be crippled in Brave? Brave has already made a statement saying they will still continue to offer leading protection against invasive ads and trackers, and this comes in the form of Brave's built-in ad blocker. The ad blocker does not use Google's extension API, and it's native to the browser, so this effectively bypasses the roadblock that Google is trying to set up. Since it's not reliant on Manifest V3, it's not going to be crippled by the rollout in January. It's clear that Brave is a privacy-forward company, and they're going to do whatever it takes to keep ad blockers and other privacy-minded features in the browser for the long run. The Brave ad blocker also includes settings to block cookies, trackers, and scripts. But here's my reservation about the Brave ad blocker. In some ways, it kind of feels like a conflict of interest because Brave actually sells its own private ads to be displayed in the browser. Now, these ads are not displayed on web pages. They're not banner ads. They're not obnoxious pop-ups. They're not videos that are going to play in the background. Instead, these ads could appear in the form of a background image on the new tab page or a card in the Brave News Feed, or even a push notification. And you can disable Brave ads and choose not to see them at all. But I have some concerns that maybe in the future, Brave ads are not going to be optional. 
And since the Brave ad blocker is native and built into the browser, couldn't Brave essentially start displaying ads in other places and choose to not block their own ads? But I think it's likely that Brave would not do something like this in the future. It seems fundamentally against their mission and they've made this clear through stuff like the Brave Rewards program. If you choose to enable Brave ads, you can actually use Brave Rewards to get paid for viewing the ads. So so essentially, Brave is taking the revenue that they're getting from advertisers and distributing a small fraction of it to you for viewing the ad in the form of BAT, or the Basic Attention Token. This is a cryptocurrency created by Brave, but you could redeem it for cash, gift cards, or just keep it as crypto. And on that note, for crypto and NFT users, Brave has some native features like IPFS support and a built-in crypto wallet. The crypto wallet is really convenient for storing your BAT, or if you want to get your feet wet with crypto without setting up a third-party wallet somewhere else. You can also browse Web3 domains and decentralized sites like my very own Crayler.crypto without the need for a browser extension or further configuration. Right now, only a handful of browsers natively support Web3 domains, and I'm glad to see Brave is one of them. Brave has really impressed me with all its features. It's easy to like Brave because it's built on Chromium, but Chromium introduces risk to user data because it's built by Google. So what is Chromium? It's Google's open source web engine that powers Chrome. You may not realize it, but Chromium powers a lot of web browsers. Chrome, Opera, Brave, Microsoft Edge, these are all powered by Chromium. Since the code is open source, it can be customized and modified to meet each browser's needs. This is how Brave is able to have their built-in ad blocker and other features. But is it possible that Google is collecting user data and sending it back to their mothership? After all, Google is in the business of data collection, and why would they just offer this open source product out of the kindness of their heart? Many users have pointed out that Chromium is kind of a giant question mark when it comes to user data privacy. Web engines like this take millions of lines of code to function, and no one really knows what's going on behind the scenes. Building your own web engine is a massive undertaking, and that's why the only main competitors at this point are Firefox and Safari. Even with all the downsides, I just can't get away from Chromium browsers until developers put resources into making extensions available on other browsers. Plus, every website supports Chrome due to its market share. That means these websites are going to load properly on Chromium browsers. I can say I made an attempt to switch to a non-Chromium browser, so if you want to see what my testing was like in Safari, I have a video on that you can watch here.